We're back, and this time it's to share the unique styles and skills of Kay Pfizer and Tiffany Hillis, teaching us about the modified continental cut for the poodle. The look is taking the show ring by storm. Now you're going to get to learn how to do it from the best. Everybody's idea of this trim, some people on this trim would leave this much body hair. To okay. me, it's not balanced. Okay. Some people would leave this much top coat, and to me, it's and not, it's not balanced, balanced either. Okay. So, to me, it's all about balance. Well, it make, doesn't yeah. matter whether it's more hair or less hair, as balance. Long as if it's they balanced. don't have as much hair on the top, take more hair off everywhere else. Okay, yeah. Then it's a balanced look. Right, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. You like your breed shared with the rest of the BISB family? I am definitely looking to work with more handlers and breeders who are willing to share their amazing skills. So hit me up below in the comment section and let me know if you're interested. And by the way, the more merchandise sold, the more I get to travel and add more episodes. So thank you in advance for your support. Now be sure to like and share this video with your friends and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. That way you can ring the little bell and you won't miss one episode. When it comes to grooming your adult show poodle, you start with the feet. That's pretty much where you start with most breeds, actually. But in this case, you're going to trim all of the little hair as close to the pad as possible. While I watched Tiffany trim away, I wanted to get a few questions answered right out of the gate. Like, with this breed, how often do you actually groom a poodle? You should do your clipper work once a week. So you're going really tight with the foot. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, some people would already say that this is tight, and that's good. But for showing, you want it really nice really and really clean. Tight. Yep. And so we usually use the five-in-one clipper, and you want to use it on the what we would be equivalent to the forty setting. Okay, and that's the the um, closest. Okay, forty is closest. Mm -hmm. Higher the number, the closer. Yep. The and there's cut. and there's some people that even shave with a um, fifty. These don't come with that setting, but an actual true 50 blade, because their dogs can handle that, and they want to show off the pretty pigmentation on their dog. And then I'm making sure to get all these little hairs around the toes. Like I said, it's not too bad, because he was he's done weekly. But you see, some people will be like, well, why even bother? Like pet people would be, why even bother just getting that off? Those feet are pretty clean. But for show, you definitely want to get all the way mm -hmm, down. Yep. And I'm using my fingers to separate. So I have a finger under here and I'm pushing the skin and manipulating it. And then I'm using my thumb to spread the toes apart. Okay. And then when it's this short, it's kind of hard to get these little hairs around the toenail. You can also use your clipper this way. To so get this, this particular one will allow you to go both ways. You can do that with this one or the, um, most people are familiar with the five in one, the, the wall. Okay. Five in one clippers. So the wall five in one and then the, what the, is this, this one. called? This one's from Artero um, and it's the Spectra. Okay, nice. That looks awesome. This thing is really fancy. I think it's too smart for me. <laughs> it's doing a really nice job. And when I'm setting this pattern, there's these two little, I guess most people would call them like the, the ankle part. Okay. There's these two bones that are right here. All right. Okay. Feel that? I feel it, yeah. Yep. We're going to right there. And you can even go just slightly above, above it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because this hair here, we're going to bevel that gonna, around there. We'll right. show that later. But And then on the back of the pad, the meaty part of your pad, mm -hmm. Okay, so this is obviously the part that hits the ground, but the whole pad right there, that's another way to mark your line. Okay. You're gonna go all the way to where it stops. To where it stops. Whoops. Which is also right here where these knuckles are. Those okay. bones are right there. Yep. And if I got a really hairy foot and I'm trying to get this hair off, I will lock, I'll take, and I'll lock it in behind these bones right here. Okay. And then I'll go bam, 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 bam. Go up, okay. okay. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the front. Yep. Like I said, this is easier, I, in my opinion, when there's more hair on the foot, because <laughs> it just comes right off. You gotta really yeah. try to get it off when Dig it's this there, short, yeah. yeah. And I'm just using my fingers to separate out the toes. Like I mentioned earlier, Kay and Tiffany are going to share the modified continental cut. Of course, you know I had more questions about that, right? This is the modified continental. Okay. How many patterns are there for poodles? Uh, technically, if you're showing them four. Okay. This is a version of the regular Continental. Only it's, they used to call it a hunting trim. Okay. Uh, or a historically correct Continental. Now they call it a modified Continental. 
because instead of growing all the coat out and banding it and spraying it up, you scissor it. So it's the same trim, but scissored to fit the body. Basically, the pattern is set the exact same way okay. that you would set it for a regular Continental as far as where it's spaced everywhere, with the exception that a lot of times you'll move the uh, modified Continental up a little further forward. Okay. It just depends on the length of the dog. When you do this trim, the same issue as with the puppy trim where you show the shelf. Uh-huh. So you can see the shelf here. Oh, uh, yeah, I can actually see the shelf right. okay the tail should go in between the point of hip and the point of rear which basically it does uh -huh. so with the hip palms being this big it would hide basically everything that he's got he could have a little more weight on him he's a little bit lean right now so that being the case you certainly don't want to make it look even more so so what you want to do is contrary to what people that are just starting in this thing the hip palm does not just go like around the hip bone okay most of the time the palm actually gets shaved almost up to the hip bone because that way you can see the rear okay so even if you shave higher than you think that you should you can scissor it to blend some people shave in a square pattern and scissor it round you know it just depends on what you're doing Okay. With him being lean, the last thing you want is to have this overshadow all of his loin area. So what I do is I start the trim where I think it goes. I'll take some of the hair off, put the tail up, and see if I still want to move it forward a little bit more. Okay. So for now... Leave too much hair on the back of that palm. It looks like it's falling off the dog. All so right, so it's, it's going to be tight. It's going to be a tight. If you shave mm -hmm. in between with the full length, width of a clipper, then it looks like the hip palms are falling off of their rear. So you you literally have to shape the. You shape the palm for the dog. For the dog, right? right. And where it's at. So where the spine is, is where you put your line. So if you yeah. go right along the backbone, and you just make a small line to start with. Make and sure you can tell yeah. because you've got, you know, you start at this end right along the spine and you start at the other end right along the spine. So after you put a clipper line in, then you can scissor it in to see where you're at. So from there, like here, I'm going to round this so that when I scissor it, it's round. Right. I'm going to slide his hip palm or rosette, whichever you want to call it. Yeah, up further. And then here, where it goes into his jacket, it'll come off and it'll be rounded as well, right in that area. So if you start with the hip palms first, then at least you can balance everything else to that. If you start with your jacket and you put it too far forward, then you may, then, you don't have balance. Yep. So start on the palms. And then because it's a modified Continental, they don't have to be long because the whole trim is overall shorter than if it was in a Continental. So now, even though it's not finished, you have the basic. Yep. I mean, and, it's, yeah. yeah. Wow. And then you have to decide if that's where you want it, which... I think it's pretty close to where it needs to be. I might want it still a bit smaller. I think it might still be a bit big, even though he's a tall dog with a lot of neck. And everything is, this trim, to me, generally does not look good on a small square dog. Oh, okay. It looks good on a, on a dog with a lot of neck and a lot of angles, because otherwise it tends to look stuffy if it's on a small square dog. You know, with a smaller dog, if you have all the top coat and you're spraying it up, then you have all the elegance. This dog has all the elegance without having any coat because of the way he's built. So you can already see this part of him and how elegant it is. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's just a matter of trimming the rest of it in to balance him. And as you can see, his coat texture is amazing. Like the other dog. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. So somehow or another, we actually managed to get two dogs with really great hair to do for your video. <laughs> This is what takes the longest out of the whole trim. Is the setting the, the, the rosette. The rosette. Yeah. Okay, 
because they balance off the dog. So trying to get, you know, get, get all your lines. And, and I don't use the blenders a lot on this trim. Okay. But I will a lot of times just on the edge. What I do is I comb to my to my trim line and anything that hangs over your clipper line, you take off. So when you do it that way or this way, if it hangs over your shave line, basically grooming 101, then you trim it off. You don't have to trim it back because then actually like this line that I just cut straight, mm -hmm. when you scissor it, see how now it's curved? Yep. Yep. So then you get your shape and you can just pick at it a little bit more. So you're literally, you're sculpting. Yes. See, I never thought that I had any artistic talent till I picked up scissors. <laughs> then I was like, oh, wow, I do have the talent the rest of the family has, just in a different way. A different way. So once you have that basically set, his back line is relatively where it should be. So, so you're doing the same thing to create that line right, there. You, you, basically, you go up your shave line to start with here so that you see if that's where you want it. Okay, so if I wanted to move it forward, now I would move it forward. Then you can take and do the same thing. You can comb this back, which a lot of times you can do three or four times before you get it all done. And then whatever hangs over the shame, shave line, you cut off. But you don't cut it off at an angle, you cut it off straight. So then, when you do this, you already have a belt. You already have, yep. Okay, I get it. Yeah, all right, so here, basically you want to shave to the elbow, not really above it. It depends on where the dog, like this dog's body is like solid to his elbow. Right. So on him, where your shave line is here, you're gonna just trim it off straight and then you're gonna go like this. Okay, you're gonna match it to, right. so okay. What we said about the puppy trim, that you don't want the hair hanging further back here than it is in the front is the same with this trim. Right. So even if we were to stay at this length and trim it in, this doesn't hang further down than this does. Gotcha. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna bring this, it up. The depth of the brisket by the elbows should be the lowest point of any trim. Okay. It should not be it should not come down like this. This being the length that we want it basically here. Now, the whole idea is still to be the same. It needs to be kind of a rounded trim. Okay. But it also has to, to blend in. I whack hair off before I trim it in. I am not a big believer in just whittling down. Right. It takes far too much time. Knowing that this is the length that we want him to match, basically. So now, I'll just take the chunkers to him to start to see where I end up with. Like I say, they're very forgiving if you end up with a, unlike the regular scissors where if you do a uh-oh, you have right. an uh-oh. Like, this in. way, mm -hmm. if you have an uh-oh, you don't really have an uh-oh. You have a oh, well, let's just blend that in a little bit more. So already you can see how his balance is getting Yeah. Better. He still looks long because we haven't started on the front yet. But see how the balance. Yep. Yeah, I We've mean you can so see it. Yeah, and yep, yep, and then I mean, yeah, you and can already. This yeah. Comes off. So before I go too much further, even though I know more has to come off right here, I'm going to take the front end down so that we can blend it in. So you want the 45 degree angle shoulder, and where his neck looks like it's really tight in, it is because this is all going to come off to blend in with it. Okay. So this is going to come down and do the same thing. So now you can see how pretty that that blends yeah. to his neck, which will still mean this will have to come down some. Now this, because it's so much of it. Oh, you're just, you're just going right in there. Well, it has come off. Yep. There's no sense in leaving all this and whittling it away. Yep. I said I'm not a believer in doing too much whittling. So when you look at it from the front, you still have all this hair here mm -hmm. that you want to take off so it'll balance. So after I basically chop it off so it looks like this, then what I'll do is I'll blend it in. Yep. 
when you shave their face, uh -huh. rule of thumb basically is whatever length this is, is the length this is. This is, okay. Okay, because then it makes it balance. That's yep. the whole trick of everything is balance. So, when they have a neck like a giraffe, sometimes you have to be <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more creative. Yeah, I mean, it's all a good thing, but too much is not any better than not enough. So when you're trimming, you still want to keep this angle in. So the basic shape is there when you look at it. Yep. Oh, wow. Same thing on the puppy trim. You pick this up, anything that hangs down here. Clean it up. It out. But you don't want to cut a hole in the back of the front leg by trimming it too much. So while you were over, while we were over here, you were trimming all of this stuff down, right? I was trimming the clipper work. The, Just the, all this. Okay, right. to the skin. Okay. Like this is not shaved, and this is shaved. Okay. Oh. This is not freshly shaved. Right. This, this is freshly, is freshly shaved. shaved. Okay. So if you were going into the show, would you shave it like a couple days no. before? Usually the day before. The day before. Okay. It just depends on the dog. Some dogs need more growth. And some dog, like this is growth on his face, uh -huh. which looks really pretty on his face, but yep. you could make his face look more, look cleaner and more refined if you freshly shaved it. Okay. Because then it wouldn't, it would look a little thinner. Okay. Because it would be a cleaner look. Because this, this gives face. you, this, yeah. he's got re a really good fill here and really good underjaw, but this just shows you all the masculine part of his right, face. Right, right. So now the trim is basically balanced. This needs to come in now and be blended. And on this trim, depending on the build of the dog, uh, one of them that I have in this trim is basically trimmed down this way. Okay. She's trimmed shorter here. That's how her body type is. Uh -huh. And on him even, I think that this would come off and blend a little bit more this way. Okay. With his length of neck, it's not necessary to take him in shorter here. If they don't have enough length of neck to really make the trim look as pretty, then you want to have it in a little bit more. So here, as I keep switching, it's the same thing as here. You know, you want to basically bevel it in, round mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. So you round it off all the way up here, here, the whole works, and make it match. This is a trim that you can be quite creative with, depending on what you like. More hair, less hair. Same with the ears. When we get to it, mm -hmm. these can come all the way down. Okay. Or they can stay like this. Okay. The main thing is, in this trim, you have to have an unbroken line here. You can't have a scissor line, scissor cross. Oh, uh, okay. It has to still be an one continuous line. line. Yeah. So the blend line here is always the hardest because you you want it rounded but you don't want it rounded and when you have to take basically everything off right um, underneath because they have so much body underneath so if you come at an angle just up this way okay it gives you a rounded look without having it slab side or come out too far this way right so that when you're looking at it from here you still you have a rounded line, but it's not a big bubble line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's more curved. Yeah. TJ, you get to do his legs, and then we'll go from there. Back combs are, I think, they're harder to scissor because they're a different shape than the front ones. So we'll this is more of an first. oblongy. Mm -hmm. But you want the same angle as you have as the with the trim. puppy trim. So, so everything is always the same. You have this angle, this angle, and this angle. So you want everything to blow. Everything, to, yeah. So if you take all the hair off the back leg, yeah, you, then you don't have balance. Right, right. No, it needs to be balanced. So even though the whole trim is shorter than it would be in a regular continental, it still has to be It's still the it's same still thing. Exactly it's short. still the exact same, just shorter. And So when you look at the angles, this angle to here, this angle to here, and this angle to here, so you still end up keeping this hair up here and trimming it in. So, but you still want everything to balance. Yeah, balance. If you would just cut this off like this, it would, yeah, it would then be, you would see yeah. you wouldn't have balance because yeah. it would be all cut off. Yeah. And that's the first thing beginners do is they cut all the hawk hair off and then the dog's leg looks like this. 
And, that's and you're like, correct. huh, well, that's not very pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple of things that helps you to choose um, to get your shape mm -hmm. is one, your clipper line on the bottom. Okay. Okay. So we already clipped his uh, his feet. Right. And there are these two bones right. right here. That's our line that we're using to go all the way around the foot. Okay. All right. The longer the hair is around this, um, uh, the, the, the palms, if it's in a puppy trim, uh, you can take this up a little bit higher. So here's the bones. Mm -hmm. You can actually take it one little smidge up higher okay. just to help show off like a prettier foot. Okay. All right. Okay. He's, he's um, a beautiful dog. Uh, his feet are okay, but sometimes you have feet that are just really nice and knuckled and pretty. Right. That was when you'd want to take it just a little bit, a little higher, bit higher so you can okay. show off those pretty feet. Okay, all right. Okay. So, and then the other part of our clipper line is the top part here. So we've already pre-shaved um, this leg. Mm -hmm. Right here, this is hawk bone. Right. Okay. So a lot of people think, oh, you shave it right to, to the hawk. We're actually going to go depending on your finger. finger. Okay. Yeah, you want, I do a finger length above that. Okay. Okay. I would rather see more hair here Okay. than less. Than less. Okay. okay. So if you're not sure, leave more. Leave more. Yeah. Okay. When all else fails, leave more. Leave okay. More. And if you can see, when I shaved that, I didn't shave it straight across. You it's, it's at, still that it's angle. At an angle. Right. Yep. And I make I had this angle is matching the angle on this side. Yep. Okay. Right? Okay. So, so both so sides. Higher, right. at the, higher up at the top of the mm -hmm. hawk, going down go. at an angle this way. Okay. And this shape here, slightly different when you're scissoring it than the shape that we have up here. Okay. okay? So we're gonna start with these because this takes me a little bit longer. I'm a really hairy dog, and he's he's not, but um, to save some time, I will make sure everything's combed out really really nice. And I will push all of this hair down. And I will take my oh. clipper on a 40 setting. Okay. And I will go around like this. Oh. All the way around. Oh. So if it's a dog that hasn't been scissored in a while, this will save me a lot of time and a lot of scissoring. Okay? Now, he's not hairy. And I wouldn't have normally done this, but I wanted to show, show you. yeah. Okay, I would have just gone right in okay. and scissored my bevel. Okay. All right. And some people will do that trick and leave it. They won't even scissor it after that. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to do that. No, we're not doing that. All right, so I'm going to take my curves and I'm going to clean up our clipper line. All right. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go all the way around this line do in the front the same mm -hmm. way I did the back all right I'm very picky about my my clipper lines because I like things to look really crisp so sometimes you'll even catch me going back after I've scissored it <laughs> and seeing little hairs that I've missed so I had combed all that hair down and I clipped all of that and scissored it right all right now I'm going to fluff it up I'm gonna give it a little shake mm -hmm. I'm gonna take my curves I'm gonna push this foot straight down like it oh, up, okay it up against me okay you're holding it so it, as if it were flat yeah that's the angle i'm holding this okay up. i just so you know at home all right that's the angle i'm holding this yep. foot. and then i will take my curves and being careful uh, watching what i'm doing that i'm not going to cut the pad when i go in here to do this right with the, with right here okay so i'm taking my foot i'm holding it down and i will set this angle in right here you guys can see there's not a lot of hair coming off because no. when you're trimming these poodles, if you do this every week or at least every other week, it'll, the trim will never get away from you and that pattern will get crisper and crisper and crisper and you'll really start to see your roundness coming through. Um, the homework you do when you're at home and not showing your dog shows when you're in the ring. All right held this down and I put this angle in mm -hmm, all right mm -hmm. look at the difference I want to make sure my dog is stacked all right you can see that angle that's right there yep I want to make sure my dog's stacked and the rest of this I'm going to scissor with his foot down okay because if I'm lift I will pick it back up and clean up lines but when I go to set things in I want my dog stacked the way he should be I want the hair freshly fluffed out in the way that it should be and now I'm going to scissor, the best way I can describe the shape I'm going for, it's oblong, kind of eggy shape. Okay, all right. Okay, I will come straight out and then I'm gonna scissor down into my bevel. Okay. Keeping 
in mind the shape that I'm going for. We have guidelines that are called breed standards when we're scissoring our dogs. Okay. We need to always keep those in mind when we're doing it. But these trims, the, each trim, it's really like a piece of art. Right. And how you interpret it is different than how the next person interprets it. Okay. Okay. Um, so you'll go in the ring and you might see 10 poodles lined up. And you might be like, wow, there's three poodles out there that really stand out. They're really, really pretty. But their trims aren't, they're kind of, some of them are kind of different. Well, that's, that's the art. That's the difference of people putting those trims on their dogs and what they like. Right. And what fits that particular dog. And sometimes you might like something on one dog, but not like it on another dog. Because maybe that dog's longer than the other dog. Right. Longer in body, I should say. Doesn't mean it's not square, right? But it's longer, right? In right. body, I'm just going around and I'm smoothing this over all the way around. I want to look at this and I want it to have that shape from every angle. Okay. So now I'm going to look at my my um, palm. I'm looking at it this way. Okay. So I'm looking at the shape in this manner. Okay. From this from, from this that angle. angle. Yep. And then I'll go and I'm going to look at it from another angle. And then I'm coming into my bevel. Also, when you're doing this, invest in some nice shears yeah. that are very sharp. So that, one, you're saving your wrists, but two, you're saving on time. And you get a nicer finish. So now I'm looking at it this way. Right, right, okay. right. All right, so I pretty much have this set the way I want. Okay. And what I would do is if I was showing and I'm setting in my pattern, I would do all, I would fluff it all up and I would do that all over again. Oh. And if oh, I had time, right. I'd fluff it all up and do it a third, third time. time. And okay. all I'm doing is I'm putting fresh edges on that and okay. that shape is really going to pop and hold okay. longer. Okay. But if I'm just doing some maintenance trimming, right. I just go through, I'll scissor it, and then for shows... I want to work on the dog at least the day before and then again on the day, the of, day the of the show. To okay. Get it nice and smooth. Okay. So we're going to go run to the front one. Okay. Okay, now on him, what I would do on yes. him is you I, go tighter? Take, I would take this off. There's too much that hangs on him. Take these. So I would take this and I would give him more of an angle here. Okay. One thing is because his hair does hang more. And because of his trim, if you take this in a little bit tighter here, then it's going to balance more for the rest of his trim mm -hmm. to take this in. But so that it balances more on the scissor trim as opposed to being a full continental. Mm -hmm. The hardest part for those of us that have done the regular continental for the whole time is to scissor it in shorter <laughs> tighter you can go a lot tighter with the, but with the, with the modified. right and it's hard to do because you want it you're like okay this looks perfect to show and then you're like but it doesn't look perfect to show necessarily with a modified modified whereas if you're doing a regular continental and see because his hair see how his hair will come up mm -hmm. and then look longer here mm -hmm. so this can come off a little bit more and then because it's a modified continental then when you look at this length of coat here and the length of coat here then that yeah then it matches just a little bit more and probably the next time she trims him she'll probably even take it in more <laughs> i'm venturing to guess but so that it matches the coat a little bit more right and it could actually i think even come down a little bit more we're just so used to doing show length legs but so this way you're a little bit more tight in with the rest of it, even though we haven't done his tail, so it's kind of hard to balance it yet because we haven't done his tail. But if you look there to there, yeah, it you all have a little bit more yep. balance. Yep. And when you do the trim, the height of the bracelets on the front should be even with the height of the bracelets on the back. Oh, okay. The breed standard reads a well let down hawk, so they should not have a long hawk. Generally, our tentative rule of thumb on their their trim is about a thumb's width above the point of hock 
is where you put your line. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like a line straight across like this because I think you lose your angles. Right. So I think when you're doing angles, you do the same angle. Yep. Yep. So that's what we do. So that leg will come down a little bit more and then it'll balance. If you don't want to eyeball it in, a lot of people will measure it with oh, their comb. Well, perfect. For me. That is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so look at that. Almost a thumbs width. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Generally, because they tend to move, Okay. I'll hold their leg up and then I'll start with just a tiny bit. <laughs> and then work it up. Okay. Yeah. Because then you can always change it. You can always take more off. You can't put it back can't on. You to let it grow. Yep. And in this case, I didn't take much down, but then when you actually pull the hair off, it looks like I took a lot down. Right. It wasn't a lot, but it really was a lot. Yeah. But when you look at it now, when yeah. you look at the difference, the height yep. balances out. It balances out. And yep. sometimes, because of our eye, we tend to leave things higher on a dog with longer legs. Okay, yeah. Because it's, it's where your eye is automatically drawn to. Right. You know, you leave more hair, you leave more length, you leave it higher up. Right, right. And then when you start looking at it, you're like, wait a minute, maybe I should take that a little bit more or that a little bit more. You know, so. Yep, now we can see it. So I combed all of this down. Okay, and, and now you're just going up. straight across, just mm -hmm. like, okay. Kind of like we did when we combed yep. this over. Yep, same thing, okay. Comb past your shave line, let the hair hang over. Yep. Cut off whatever hangs over. Yeah. And when I'm just doing like a cleanup on him and I'm not scissoring him, I still will clean up my bevels just because it keeps, it gets keeps. wet and it just keeps them cleaner. Right. right. If it gets too hairy. Because otherwise they get this. Right. Yeah. So even though I just did that, I released it mm -hmm. and I'm just cleaning up. Yep. But you pretty much already have a nice clean little bevel right there. And then we talked about our clipper line, the bones right there. So that's already set. Yep. And that's what we were doing, showing off, cleaning up around the clipper line. And then I'll take my curves and to clean up this bevel, I'll take his front foot and I bend it down. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come in and I'll put an angle in this way and an angle in that way. Okay. And then I'll bring it up around. I'll put his foot down and then I'll scissor in the size that we need. And then I'm just gonna fluff it before I set it back down. It's a lot of fluffing. And I like to and give shaking. it a little shake because mm -hmm. I like the hair to be in the natural position. Because when they're running around the ring, what's their foot doing? Oh, there you go. That's okay. why I shake that it. That's why you shake it. Okay. I want to see what it's going to do in its natural position. So now it's kind of in its natural position. Now we can scissor in our shape. We already have a this set in, so we kind of know where we're going mm -hmm. with it. I do the same thing. Um, I do on the bottom. Sure how she does the top of the bottom. Okay. Because, the because they say it's, uh, technically they say it's like a toilet paper roll. Flat across top and the bottom and round around. Oh, okay. So above the shave line, the same as the other way, you just cut everything that comes above the shave line. So that gives you your trim in. And then how this hangs down, when you look at the rest of the coat, right. see how much hair is hanging here? Yep. You just kind of take off what's hanging, because the same thing is what TJ said, right? when they're moving, you would have that hanging. All that moving, So now yeah. that is now off, but what you've done is you've scissored to your shave line. Okay. So if you look at it now, it kind of resembles a toilet paper roll. Yep. Flat across the top, flat across Cut. the bottom, and then you and just then round it in. Yep, okay, all right. You know, sometimes it's easier to be able to scissor it off at the shave line, mm -hmm. because a lot of times if people try and scissor this way, if you don't get it fluffed out straight, like this, then you end up with it in different lengths. In different lengths, okay. Okay, so now we have a uh, starting point and an ending point. And now we can go and connect the dots. Okay. Okay? Yep. Scissor it all in and blend it all in. And make it, in, in this trim, will be a little more oblong than round because it is a modified continental. Correct. As okay. opposed to a continental. Continental. And you're just using a curved. I'm using curves. This is actually a, a 10 inch curve. Okay. Um, but you can use a eight inch or a nine inch, whatever you're, you're comfortable with. And I'm just going around, look, I'm walking around and looking at it in all different directions. And the hardest part is to keep the bottom even with the top. Yeah. You know, by the time you scissor and depending on whether the hair is hanging, which is why when you pick up and shake the foot, then you set it down and you see where the hair falls. And you see Kay's holding up his other foot. 
Oh. Because uh, that gives him no choice but to keep, but to this, keep, the foot down. keep this foot down. And his hair on his legs does tend to hang a little bit. Okay. So you have to watch the bottom like we did on the other one. Right. So you saw that look pretty rounded. Right. But then we just fluffed it up again. And that's why I say when you're doing this and you're trying to get a pretty scissor trim for the ring, you really should do it two or three times. So now I am gonna lift his leg up okay. to smooth it because I set my shape in. Right. So now I'm okay lifting my leg up to Specs clean and up. edges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, everything changes the way the hair falls, the way it um, mm -hmm. when you when you pick the, the foot up. Yep. So you can see. Oh yeah. The difference. I mean, it's night and day. Yeah, I mean, that's like, holy crap. What happens a lot of times on the bottom, when they stand on their feet, mm -hmm. you trim them, and then they drop their heel down just a, a tiny bit, and then they looks just like like it's hanging down. And right. A lot depends on how they stand up on any given day. Like right now, he's tired of standing on the table, so he's dropping his feet. He, he gets tired, and those feet just go... Yeah. But jink. See how when he starts to drop yeah. his feet, how this comes down? How that down. comes down, right. But in all actuality, when you look at it with his foot up, it's yeah, perfect. Yeah, then it's perfect, yep. Yeah, and on, on another note, if you're, you got a show and you got you come in, your dogs are all prepared, you go to scissor them to smooth them over for the ring, mm -hmm. you have to be careful too, because you can whittle away. Right. Yeah. And that's why it's important to fluff your dogs out and make sure you're brushing them, combing them. Coming them out yeah. too. Mm -hmm. on the because regular. this coat will tend to shrink in on itself. Oh, okay. Tail time. Tail time. I'm just re-fluffing it. Even though you saw me over there brushing, right. fluffing. If I'm scissoring, I always re Refluff. Fluff. Yep. Because I don't want to put a hole in my coat. We set his clipper line. A good starting point. Doesn't matter how the tail is, a good starting point. See the bottom of his rectum, right? It also coincides if they haven't, if they're a nicely built dog with their shelf. Okay, so see his uh, point of yep. view, issue. Yep, it will coincide with the bottom of his rectum. Okay, so if I was to put this comb right here, okay, I bend his tail down. Oh, I, I know I can at least shave to right there. Okay, now I might change that to show off his palms so the tail isn't hitting right. the palms later on, but I know that I can at least shave to that point right there. Okay. That's how I came up with that line. So you can see I already pre-shaved there. And it doesn't matter. I, I do poodles all the time. I always measure, I always look. Because if you just go to where that shave line is, what'll happen is this line will come inch up, inch up, inch up, inch up. And then next, I yeah. always do a rough little choop just to oh, check, just it, check it, a okay. visual check. We set the clipper line. I just, I pulled all this bottom part of this hair down. Mm -hmm. and now I'm just this bottom part right here. And now I'm gonna trim where my clipper line is. So you can see my clipper yep. line is right there. Yep. Right. I'm gonna clip all of that off. Okay. I'm just going around and clipping, clipping that. I'm gonna go around to the other side depending on how long tails are, but in general, right. okay, his occiput at the top of his skull is right here. Okay. Okay. So if you weren't ever doing this and you're trying to figure out what, what you're doing and you have a dog with a nice tail, I want to always make sure the top of my uh, hair right here is at least, especially when I trim like this. Right. It can always be fuller if it has a spray up because we want it to be balanced. Right. But on a dog like this, I don't really need to take a lot of hair off uh, okay. of this. T I am. Right. But I'm just saying there's not a lot. That's a right. starting point. Okay. Okay. So you're talking about where the actual bone is bone as is. opposed to where the coat yeah, is. The back okay. Of the, the back of the skull is basically okay. the top of the neck, the back of the skull. Mm -hmm. And that so to get a nice crisp um, end on mm -hmm. here, I don't take the whole tail because to me it's just my preference. Um, if I take this tail and I twist it like this, I'm going to take some of this hair. Like I did. And, pull and, it off. and, and <laughs> in the middle, mm -hmm. and then it takes away some of my shape for my for my fullness. Okay. I would rather scissor it in. Okay. Okay. Um, so I just take the tip of the tail. It's not an exact science. I don't measure how much I'm taking, but I just take the tip. I run my comb through it. Pull it out straight. Make sure I know where my actual tip of my tail is. You're right. So I'm not cutting. My dog's tail. Important rule in grooming, know where all your body parts are. 
Um, and then I'm gonna take, remember we measured. And right. I, know I don't need to take a lot off, okay? That gave me a fresh little round trim right there. Right. So I did the bottom, I did the top. I have, you can see I don't have any holes. He's got a nice tail. There's no holes in here. I don't really need to hide anything. So I will take and take my tail and comb it in half. Oh, no. Okay. And then I like to take my big curves. And so I have a starting point and I have an ending point. And I'm bubbling. I'm always thinking round. Right. And bevel. Okay. And I'm going to do this side. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And it's not an exact science, but I just part it in the middle because I'm still going to fluff it out and scissor it all the way around, looking eyeballing it in. Right. But do you see how I'm meeting this side yep. to this side? And, yep. Ends are meeting. So even if you're not good at eyeballing things in and you're not necessarily a scissorer, you can pretty much get your shape like this. And you can always take it tighter and tighter and tighter if you need to. But this will get you get you started. Right, right. Now I'm fluffing it all out and I'm going to shake it out. I'm going to hold it at the tip. And I'm going to look all the way around. So I'm back here. So I'm going to go ahead and just start. And he's up higher than me. I'm a shorty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I usually like to start looking at it from the side. Because I want to make sure I'm not leaving too much hair back here. Okay. To make my dog look longer. Oops. But I still want it to look full and rounded. And sometimes you'll put your dog down and you see them running around and the way they're holding their tail as they're running around, you might want to leave more hair in a spot or another because of the way they hold their tail. Right. All right, and I'm going to come around and look at it from this side. And you can see my shape is there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just smoothing and cleaning up my lines. And then I don't want to forget about checking my tip. Right. So I'll hold it down further. Okay. And then I would do that, not the parting all over again, but I would fluff it and scissor and check it again, just like just again. Yeah. yeah. So basically, either way you get at it, whether you do it by just parting, doing this way and doing the tip, or doing it this way, right, and then pulling the hair out, you end up with the same type of same thing, time. and it gets your length and it gets you a point to start just up. Start up. Yeah. So either way you do it. And then when you shake the tail out, you know, you get, depending on the dog and the tail and the length of the tail, you get a little rounder, a little more oblong, depending. Like Depend our right. tails tend to be a little longer now, so sometimes they tend to be a little more oblong, but with his coat as good as it is, his tail holds real well. So good. Final stop on this amazing poodle grooming adventure, it's the head and, of course, the ears. For this, you might want to have them lying down on the grooming table. Just makes it easier. In this trim, the ears can be either very short or they can be longer. I think they look good if they blend with the trim. Okay. So I tend to leave them like this, only a tiny bit shorter. Of course, checking where the bottom of his ear leathers are, which is almost to where his hair is already trimmed. Mm -hmm. I'll put the ears the length I want first because I think they have to balance the rest of the trim. And if they have too much hair, uh, sometimes I'll shave the underneath of the ear. Okay. Just to take the extra weight out. He doesn't have, he's got really good and uh, easy hair. So he doesn't really need it trimmed out. And then it's just a matter of checking lengthwise to see whether they match, match. to start with. Yep. Being as this is a relatively new trim actually to the show ring, the main thing here on a scissored head is it has to be an unbroken line here, which means you cannot go across on your top knot and scissor it like this. Okay. Okay, this line has to remain how it is. So, if you start here, and the head can be bigger or smaller. I happen to prefer them not to look like a mushroom. Some people want the heads to be bigger. So, if I start here, and I scissor it in that way, then it gives me a nice clean line to start with where everything blends. Okay, so this will go here. So you're just combing up and then... Just blending it, it in. Blending it in. Okay, 
So you can leave his head like this, uh -huh. or you can take it in more. Um, I tend on the girls to take their heads in tighter. Okay. With him, and this trim is such a good fit for him, I think probably to leave his head to be just a little bit bigger. Okay. When you look, when we get this part done, then we'll look at both sides. You see the difference. Right? Yeah. If you leave too much length, then if you're going to show them, then you have to worry about hairspray or whatever. Oh, and some people yeah. still do this trim and put one band in the front. To me, it makes no sense. If you're going to do that, you might as well throw the hair out and put bands in them. So you don't have to do the bands with this cut. Right. No. That, that's the whole idea behind it. It's a scissored, it's a scissored continental. Okay. Like I said, they used to call it a historically correct continental. And if you look at photos from centuries back of poodles, they're in various different types of trims uh -huh. and various different um, lengths. Used to be there wasn't as much length on top and all the length was underneath. Uh, years before that, they were just kind of all trimmed all over. Okay. So it's kind of gone in waves. When we show them in a uh, trim that... Uh, we band them. Uh -huh. Generally, we do a reverse V right here. Okay. On him, with scissoring him, the hair needs to come back just a little bit further from his eyes so that it can be trimmed in, but it doesn't necessarily need to be in a V shape uh -huh. because the V, when you do that on their heads, if you cut it in here and then you pull it this way is what it gives you the pretty look on their bubble. Right, okay. But it doesn't make any sense for... Uh, scissored top knot and if it was a regular uh, trim top knot that I was doing on my pet dogs uh -huh. I would do the same thing pull all the hair down and scissor off whatever hangs over okay but because this is um, a little bit longer trim on their head and we're blending it into their ears then we leave it come up a little bit more rather than cutting it straight off. Okay. So we, we start out with this look here. Right. And then we're going to blend it in here where it's all scissored in. Yeah. When you start to scissor it, you realize how much his hair has grown since the last time he was trimmed. So you can do a Bichon type ear or you could leave it be long and straight. I happen to prefer it all the way scissored in. Okay. And it doesn't have to be short. It just has to blend in. Blend in. Right, right. And when we put him on the ground and we look at his balance, we'll see whether we need to take too much more off of the top, but I'm going to suspect that we don't. So there you have an unbroken line, which is required in the trim. Mm -hmm. You have balance, you have angle on the neck. Yeah, you can see his eye, you can see his head, yep. as opposed to having a little bit more here. And they can be shown this way. I mean, it, it's, it's this is just trims. This is just a much cleaner. Right. And it, and it flows. To it me, the down. whole idea on this trim is to be utilitarian, to be easy, and to be elegant. It's a poodle. It should be elegant. Yep. yep. So it doesn't matter whether they're running the field or whether they're sitting on the couch. They should be elegant. Yes. Whether it be this trim, which he wears so beautifully. Yes, absolutely. Um, Look at absolutely that. <laughs> if you're keeping count, I will tell you I cut down two hours of footage to an hour-ish. Not bad, right? Ideally, my next poodle episode will be taking a puppy cut down to an actual continental. That's definitely on the to-do list. But in the meantime, I am beyond grateful for both Tiffany and Kay sharing their individual styles and skills with this modified continental grooming extravaganza. Until next time. You're not good at eyeballing. See, you learn, you learn new things every day. Yep.